Lemon Amiga Freedom. A Play Diet Video Review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Game Guide and Review. In this week's show, we'll be checking out Desert Strike, developed and produced by Electronic Arts and released to the public on the Amiga in 1993. Okay, come down. Okay, I got the target. Your laser is armed, sir. Okay, I got target right there. Okay, come down. Coming down. They're gone, sir. begins with an Amiga exclusive theme and backdrop as we drop into this adventure as we move back in time of course back to 1991 and Desert Storm was topical in the early 90s when this was created and so work began in 1992 on the Sega Mega Drive first. Again, we can see the coders generously displayed on our screens and those coders remained a mystery of course back in the day but we shall go into those and their future experiences a little later on but for the meantime let's see this amazing intro and it's amazing that they managed to pack so many of these voice sound effects onto just the one intro disc. Okay, I got a target right there. Target right there. Oh. Gob Squad are of course the playtesters of this game and no idea who those guys were but they had a batch of playtesters over at EA and this was the Amiga version of that mega classic. So let's dive straight into the action in an Amiga exclusive animation which is quite atmospheric of course and see some limited animation and a limited storyline some of which is misspelled on a number of copies and you can see some great effects that one in particular reminded me of June 2 Myanmar, I see that all the missile launchers are not in the place for attack. Get the plans together or I will see that you suffer the same fate as my last deputy. Hey yo man, I have my mighty plan alright, but you know I got kids to feed and you're gonna cause the end of the world. Get to work now or you'll be food for the rats from which you came. Yeah man, your greatness, the world will cower at your feet. Our time of triumph will soon arrive. News has been reported today that the president has instructed the special forces best chopper team to deal with the situation. Experts speculate that the president does not want to risk an all-out airstrike, and that the unarmed pilot chosen must be very qualified indeed. Let's go, let's get him. I'm right behind you.
At the end of the first disc, we find the options menu, where we can change quite a few options in this game. And amongst those, we can also change the controls. There are three options in this game, control-wise. There is the mouse, the keyboard, and of course the obligatory joystick. And it's great that when we click those buttons, they will appear in semi-3D, and it gives us a graphical representation of those devices. Let's just stick with the joystick for now, stick with the old zip stick, and I also appreciate the click switches, which flick on and off when you click these devices on and off. That's also a great feature. And to go with those, there is a suitable range of sound effects. Clicking the very top button, we get to select our co-pilot. And selecting the co-pilot really does make a huge difference in this game. You can see there is a variety on offer, both male and female, both in action and missing in action. And the co-pilot will, of course, operate the minigun, which is attached to our ship, and will aim for targets. And the co-pilot will also use the winch as well. You can see slippery on the winch, certainly don't want that candidate. And you can flick through a surprising number of candidates until you find the one that you like. And old Bob, well... His energy with rapid fire is great, but maybe his winching skills aren't so great. So I'm going to go for Rupert, seeing as his skills are generally the best. Each mission we also get a major briefing screen and unfortunately that is not a major event since as the map doesn't change from briefing to briefing and neither does the animation as well and I didn't really notice that the mission was so important I just observed that the guys were drinking coffee and watching that guy waving a stick around on that screen but apart from that the first objective is to blow up the radar sites and you have to blow up the power plant on the airfields and then hit the enemy command bases on that very first mission and if you want to survive then you'll be handy with those guns and use your wits in this game as we shall see it's not a pushover we arrive aboard a frigate which is sailed through to the Persian Gulf and we dispatch an Apache helicopter a way to fulfill those missions that you saw on the brief screen. We get to fly the Apache and we also get to fire a range of missiles as well. We have a chain gun, we have a basic range of short range missiles and we have some Hellfires as well which are the heavy duty long range weapons which usually knock out things in one go. So the Hydras are the very shortest but very fastest firing weapon and you can fire a bunch of hydras off and kill all enemies and at this point I'm actually removing the first target which is the radar sights it's best to wade straight in there and launch all your weaponry get in there quick and dispatch that before it can summon guys and yes guys will ride in on these roads and enemies can aim on target if those radar installations are left up and standing for very long. You'll also find some missing in action. This is an MIA and you have to pick those up using the winch. Simply fly over those and the winch will drop down. This is where the co-pilot really comes in handy because if you have a great co-pilot that should be no problem and if you have a blind idiot then you can be swaying around there forever waiting for the guy to latch on. Having picked that guy up, he will then give us extra energy later on when we manage to land him back to home base. But for the moment, let's carry on and destroy the rest of that radar. Once the big guns are removed, then it's best to use the small arms to remove the unhostile environments. And when you blow those up, you'll see that they disappear on the map which you are given in the game. If you can press the F10 key that will bring up that map and then you can mark off the progress and you can try your way through it. So that's what I like to do is bring up the map momentarily and check those stats and that is a very handy feature as we shall see and sometimes those missing in actions are in deadly territory and sometimes they will actually get killed if you don't rescue them fairly quickly and sometimes there are even goodies hidden on those tents. 
but if you blow away one too many bullets from that gun, then whatever it is hidden in Nile's tents will automatically blow up with it, even if that was, just like this, a great armaments cache which would have refilled all of our weapons all the way up to the top. Warning. to the power station we've fallen over the airport which is pretty heavily guarded and again if your co-pilot is a bit of an idiot he can miss with those heavy missiles and that's really not a great thing because those things can really wipe our health we start off with 600 units of energy at the beginning of the game and those will be wiped off steadily as we get hit which means we can survive a number of hits, quite a few hits in fact, and we're down to 275 power, which is the bottom figure you can see on that panel, and our fuel is down to 36% as well, which means we'll have to pick some more up. Luckily we can cycle through all the targets in this area by using these cycle bars and our mouse, and you can see all the missing in actions, which again will provide us extra energy later on. And we are nowhere near missing in actions right now, but we can find those. And we can also find the fuel that we need as well. This is an open world landscape, we can take these missions on in any order and we can even ignore missions if we like, but we are limited to the amount of fuel that we can pick up per level and there will only be a certain number of canisters, but there are some hidden ones as well and we are not really limited by the energy as long as we don't get hit. And as I say, if you pick up all these missing in action characters, of which I think we can pick up six, and take those back to the beach area then we can drop those guys off and get some more power and it's sometimes best if we only have a few hundred power left to go around collecting those and then drop those off and restock It's also quite a large map as well and you can get lost in this game and it's very handy that we have a map to show us where we are and the landing bay is more or less in the centre area on this beach. The first thing we will do is the auto landing, the computer automatically takes over and ejects all our friendlies and in this case we get to count the number of guys walking out of there, some of those will give an unpleasant hand on hips sign and tap the feet as if it's about time that they got rescued and I like that sense of humour and I like the flag waving and things like that and the boat waiting to take those guys away Warning beachhead also gives us an opportunity to select that fuel and collect that and we can also collect some more armaments as well which should give us hopefully some more of everything some more armor some more missiles and all that fuel we can only have a hundred percent fuel of course and we can also ignore all these enemies and as long as we don't delay then we shouldn't run out of fuel as long as we get on with that target and okay. get blasting but there are many distractions in this game and of course the airport and it's great to see touches like the oases and things like that which really add to this and it's all those great touches which really give this great atmosphere as far as the controllability goes it's really great once you get used to that and it's sometimes difficult to master but once you have mastered that then you can pilot this no problem but sometimes you can stay just out of range of that gun with certain co-pilots. But with others you simply will not make it and so it's best to always use the long range missiles against the very hardest enemies and the game is definitely a trial and error game if you can get far with it and really memorize where the hardest enemies are, not all those straight away, then you shouldn't have any problem wiping out the rest. Warning. Oh. 
Once again, we are delayed at the airport, and how often have we had that feeling? We still need to get to that power station, and so we can collect this missing in action guy who's under fire, of course, as usual, and we can attempt to pick him up whilst blowing the guy, and we can now set off and we can try to find the power station. Surely that won't be so hard to find because it will be protected, of course, and it will also have power lines running across this road. And the power station really does take a lot to knock out. You will probably use most of your hydras, maybe a few hellfires as well to knock that thing out, or if you are patient, of course, you can use the chain gun. But once again, one bullet too many when knocking out that power station will destroy the thing inside it. I think this game has been playtested to perfection because all these installations are just about well guarded enough to knock out pretty quickly and to even rescue hostages under fire. This game even adapts to dual fire joysticks. If you have double fire, then you don't have to press the space bar to toggle the weapons. And that's great. It means you don't have to lean over at the keyboard in order to press things and to activate things, but some kind of quirk in this game means that some guys will run for cover instead of being picked up, and you can see a guy has run for cover under that well-defined rock, and in this isometric 3D environment, the programmer said one of the hardest things that he programmed was actually the 3D itself, so that things would ricochet off the sides of things, and I think that the programmer has done an amazing job of doing that because the ricocheting effect in this game is very effective and it's actually quite fun when that happens. Let's look for some more ammo crates and some more fuel dumps and then let's head off and destroy that power station. The Desert Strike series was devised by Mike Posen and John Manley, who you probably saw on the title screens. Of course, the series went on to Jungle Strike in 94, which appeared on the Amiga and the CD32, Urban Strike in 96, Soviet Strike in 97, and Nuclear Strike appeared on the PlayStation in 1998. It was produced by Stephen Wetherill and Matt Webster. Steve converted Jet Set Willy and Manic Miner to the CPC machine. Steve Wetherill also helped code Myth on the Amiga in 1992 and moved on to Command and Conquer and June 2000. The other producer, Martin Webster, also went on to produce Theme Park AGA and came up with the concept for the original FIFA Soccer in 1994. The code was created by Gary Roberts and David Colclough. Gary Roberts created the original Tanks game in 1991, which was a public domain tanks game inspired by a PC title and was actually three years ahead of Scorched Tanks, which appeared in 1994, created by Michael Welsh. Strike, otherwise known as Desert Strike Return to the Gulf, was released on a number of platforms and even the Lynx got its own version. These great graphics were created by Damon Redmond, John Law and Carl Cropley. And John Law, well, he created the graphics for Escape from Colditz in 1991, moved on to Space Hulk in 93, 
and Damien Redmond, well, he created many Codemasters classics, including the Quick Snacks conversion in 1991, and also conversions of Dolby Twins' Crystal Kingdom Dizzy and Robin Hood Legend Quest appeared, and he moved on to Cosmic Spacehead for Codemasters in 1993. seen Cole Cropley's work before if you've played Floor 13 because he created the graphics for that game as he moved on to John Madden Football, the original version which appeared on the Amiga. Lastly, that music that you heard over the title sequence was created by Jason Whiteley and Jason Whiteley created the Road Rash theme which appeared in 1992 and John Madden, as we've mentioned already, he worked on that, and Space Hulk, which appeared in 1993. I found an interview with Mike Posen online, and apparently he got the idea for the Desert series because he was actually given the job by Trip Hawkins walked into his office and demanded an updated version of Choplifter and Mike Posen actually liked the idea of a 3D isometric game so he worked with the idea of creating matchbox cars and matchbox type elements and graphic sizes and things like that and so that's why you get this kind of rigged 3D environment. and actually started out in a secret government test site developing nuclear weapons and he built his very first computer which was a Sol 20 apparently and he moved out of the secret government nuclear test site and bought himself a new computer where he developed Deluxe Video for Electronic Arts which was a big success and after Deluxe Video they kept him on as a game designer. <laughs> On the Amiga we are uncovering weapons caches the easy way and we can leave those lying around and they will not disappear so we can store those and find those and if you've played this level and this game often enough then you can go straight towards those goodies reveal those and have those waiting for the opportune moment and as long as you don't run out of those essential ingredients most likely power is the one that's going to go which will destroy the vehicle. Of course, if you simply run out of fuel, then you can find that lying around. And if you're out of weapons, of course, you can find that as well. Let's liberate the first airport. And you can see the airport symbol is actually still on that map. We have to destroy every single one of these fighters, which will require the chain gun. And we need to destroy these installations as well. These buildings take the hard way with the chain gun, but they are possible. And sometimes you'll find guys in here with rocket launchers and things like that. So you'll have to be quick on the draw because those rocket launchers really do hammer away at our armor. And so sometimes it's best to take on the missions in order. You can see blown away at the power station already. And coming back to this airport, as long as that's unarmed, then that's fine. The buildings won't put up too much resistance. And of course, we can pick the planes away. It's a shame that those don't attack and fly off and try to circle the skies. Uh, would have been a really great addition to this game. But apart from that, they have crammed all of the Sega Mega Drive features in there and we managed to get this on three discs as well. Unfortunately, that was not, at the time, hard drive installable. Although the controls are great, and they are responsive, and they are a joy to use once the player gets used to those, then it's great. The one thing with the controls is whilst we are firing, unfortunately we can't really manoeuvre the ship, we'll be locked in forward and reverse mode. But if you do want to turn, then you'll just have to release the fire button, turn and fly away, and we can back away and fire at the same time as well. So this craft is quite versatile. Warning.
warning. One of the few annoying parts is we will gain an audible warning when we are running low of fuel and running low on power. And, well, sometimes we can't avoid running low on shield power and that warning tends to stay there forever. Luckily, if we're only low on fuel, then we can pick that up. And that will get rid of that annoying sound. And so we've managed to clear the airport and the power station and the first two objectives, which was actually the radar grid. And so we only have a few objectives to go, but you can see the power is down to 210. So we're going to have to transport some more MIAs back, of which we only have two at the moment. But those guys are very difficult to get and they are hidden sometimes in amongst rocks, which means sometimes we'll use up too much energy and too much armor trying to get those guys in the first place which can be a rather defeating objective in itself. taken on half a division just to get the MIA, just to get some health back. Well, maybe we can start heading towards the beachhead to get that health back and stop messing around trying to get the MIAs. Warning. Warning. There were actually quite a selection of helicopter shooters on the Amiga people might remember Seek and Destroy, which was an overhead version of this type of game, and was also Apocalypse, which was a side view, collect them up, where you had to collect hostages and destroy big guns, and that is yet another Apache simulator, or maybe a Comanche simulator, but you did get a selection on the Amiga, and even though the scrolling isn't amazing on this rip, unfortunately it's a bad rip, and this ripper Ooh. is not too bad at ripping and it's great that this thing actually does manage to rip with the audio still in sync but unfortunately the scrolling aspect isn't the smoothest that i could find but i will endeavor to try to get those fixed as we continue you might notice that the screen there is actually not centered because i switched off the screen centering in the windows uae so you can see that we have a few objectives left we still have the big objectives left and the airport as well and so what we really should do if we are running low of energy is we can actually find the extra energy in in two items the first item is the power station and if you destroy that bullet by bullet then you should get 100 percent that is 600 units of health all the way back from blowing up that power station. If you can't, well, there is another bonus item, which is right at the bottom of the map. And if you can reveal that and pick that up, then that's 100% yet again, 600 points of armor. And that's great to have full armor just before you take on the very worst enemies on this particular stage. And that means that you shouldn't have to lose any lives whatsoever. You just pick that up right before you destroy the main bases at the end. And that means that you should have all the armor in the world to blow that up, even if you get a few direct hits. And so that's one of the easiest ways. Unfortunately, I did not remember to collect that in that particular playthrough. And so let's return to our actual playthrough, where I simply waded in anyway and tried to blow everything up. And whilst I was doing that, they actually blew up the fuel which was being held on that vehicle. Sometimes the idiots piloting the rockets will also generate the nearest target, which was actually the car, and the nearest target wasn't the biggest threat in this case, which wastes a life. Warning. Warning. 
back in the day I really did enjoy this game and I memorized it enough to complete level 1 but not sadly on this playthrough. After this level 2 you get to fire against some scud missiles and scud busters and things like that. That's a really fun level. Unfortunately I didn't really enjoy level 3 very much because that's a city landscape much like the follow-up jungle strike and that really did not interest me much to get to the final scenario. Warning. Warning. I think the Sega Mega Drive original version handles definitely the best, is the smoothest and is the most fun to play, seems the most solid version and the most reasonable, even though these graphics are much larger on the Amiga and more detailed as well. We get some great voice sound effects and everything is great, everything is in there, but it's sadly not quite as good as the original game. And of course they didn't make conversions absolutely perfect because they wanted to highlight the fact that the original was the best. But they probably did as much as they could with the Amiga, it's just that they didn't optimize the code. And if you plug an L30 into this it doesn't really run anymore quickly, which is a shame they could have optimized it so that it ran on fast CPUs. Warning. 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 On the other hand, I think this game is sometimes a hunt for dump scenario. You can see I've cleaned out most of these ammo dumps already, and the fuel dumps as well. And maybe there could have been a few more of those listed around, and it would have been also helpful to not have those blown up by one stray bullet. But we managed to uncover some fuel earlier on, so let's see if we can make any more of this. also find an extra special hidden bonus mission hidden in many of these scenarios and that will appear as a question mark somewhere floating around the map and sometimes you can pick up the right guy and earn yourself some bonuses and yes there is a score in this game it appears on the map screen not unfortunately on the main screen but we can check that out of course by pressing F10 Warning. Moving on to the scores, Amiga Magazine gave Desert Strike 80%, The Lemon Amiga Gang gave it currently 83%, Amiga Joker gave it 85%, Amiga Format gave it 87%, Amiga Action gave it 90%, CMVG and Amiga Powerballs gave it 92%, Dato Magazine gave it 94%, Acar gave it 95%, and Amiga Computing gave it 93%, the one gave it 93% and Xiomega gave this 93%. Both scores combined give this 9 out of 10. Even when we die, we can restore it or we can see yet another presentation screen, a death screen where we get to see the pilots and the co-pilot lying in their own blood and some kind of angry aggressor is waving some kind of stick around on the horizon. Thank you very much for viewing and then the Lemon Amiga play guide and review. I hope those bonuses and secrets have helped you understand the first level of this game so you can march straight through it and get on to the fantastic level 2. And that really does take some time and some patience to master. Thanks again for reviewing another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. See you again for another one pretty soon. Thank you.